Welcome to Crimson Guitars, welcome to my home studio, and welcome to Luther's Question Time, episode 82. This is a podcast, a stream, where I answer your questions on pretty much guitar building, but, you know, almost anything goes. Uh, we've got a bunch of people in the building, and, uh, well... Martin of the Nuclear Village, Rab Knox, Bedroom Programmer, Jaybird Customs, Mike and Noel, Barry Christian, Old Man, uh, says, Hi Bun, how are you and Mrs. Bun? Well, very well, thank you very much. Uh, for a given value of, of well, um, I, I managed to eat rather a lot of strawberries today. Um, might not have gone too too good for me but it's all fun and games frugal fixer in the house this this camera shot is not ideal uh things have changed things have changed welcome to welcome to a proto part of the new setup at home uh i have been messing about that is camera two this is this two hello where are you that's you hi oh that light was supposed to be on as well. Check out this lamp. Oh my God. Isn't that cool? Uh, <laughs> it's a little bit, a little bit much. But uh, yeah, so I've spent a lot of time over the last week <laughs> at headquarters in meetings and stuff, but I've also been sorting this out to a certain extent. Now, camera one, I'm gonna leave you looking at the tools for a bit. Camera one needs to needs to be told what to do. Uh, now, of course, I apologize. I was a tad delayed. And that was due to, of course, technical difficulties. I, I never thought that I would have this many. Waha, that's better. This many HDMI cables in my life. And uh, yeah, it's a lot. But we're fine. We're fine. Alrighty, on we go. Um, now, questions, questions, comments, criticisms, uh, feedback of all sorts taken, please be kind, um, but uh, yeah, bedroom programmer says, wonder how long that'll last, this, this setup, I'm going to give it about a half a minute, because next week, I'm going to be doing the same exact thing over at Crimson Headquarters, uh, similar sort of setup, probably fewer tools. Uh, this one, I've got all of my carving tools, well, a bunch of my carving tools are up at the moment, and uh, there's not that much call for, for traditional carving tools in guitar building, uh, at least not spoon gouges and all that jazz, but yeah, other than that, pretty much the same sort of things are all going to be set up behind me at headquarters. So, well, there is that. Now, uh, this is this is a live stream. Uh, super chats, if you send through a super chat, I will both appreciate it and 100% will get and see your question. Uh, I will, I generally go through, you know the thing. Anyway, I say this because we've got a couple of, a couple of questions that come through. Austerian, Austerian says, my bandsaw can't cope with the cherry in my through body bass neck. Uh, wow. Can you recommend a hand saw that would be accurate but cut through it like butter? Please, Austerian, tell me what's up with your bandsaw because even the tiniest bandsaw that I have experienced, like the smallest, less meatiest, tiniest thing, uh, could cope with with pretty much any any timber I chose. So uh, this is through a uh, this is a base through body base neck. So it's a, a long way, but at worst you're talking maybe four inches thick. I honestly think that your bandsaw should be able to cope with it, and the first place to look is uh, is a good blade. Now, uh, the TPI is what you're looking for. If you're cutting through, uh, if you're cutting through chunkier material, deeper material than uh, your bandsaw is comfortable with, uh, go with a lower TPI. Uh, I my personal favourite is about a, a three quarters to a one inch deep blade with three or four TPI 
and uh, that 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 does that does it. Uh, I've just I've just noticed something somewhat annoying about this workshop, and it's all my fault. Uh, I'll show you in a second. So yeah, there is that. I would suggest that look into the blades. And you can get carbide tipped, so your, your blade itself is just the standard uh, band of steel, but you've got uh, installed tips and all sorts. Um, okay, now, <laughs> Luther for Bills says, holy F, hashtag all of the gouges. The funny thing is, that whole row of gouges there, um, it, I think you can see it on this on this shot, yeah. That whole row of gouges was condensed into a massive pile uh, on the window uh, next to where my old bench used to be. And I honestly didn't think that I was going to fit them in. And in reality, there's maybe about half a dozen that didn't quite make the cut. And they fit perfectly. So there is that. Okay. Uh, bring your questions. I'm going to pause that. Stream health. Uh, tell me if the stream's going okay. And uh, I'm, I'm obviously standing in a new spot. Now, several things that I've noticed is uh, it's damned hot. So I'm gonna have to get some airflow going. And I'm gonna have to hope that I don't annoy my neighbors too much by doing so. And yes, if you're saying, oh, that sounds bigger than it used to be, I really am walking further than <laughs> I've ever had to in this workshop, which is all fun and games. Uh, so yes, chat disconnected. No, my internet is not currently working. On air, this is all going. Uh, I sincerely hope that you guys are still currently watching that this is saying on air, but what I'm not seeing is my own internet, which is a problem. Uh, Damon McCartney says, I had huge issues with my bandsaw until I bought a new blade. And that was the... Uh, that was the last bit of chat that I could see. Now, uh, okay. Uh, important question: Where are the squirrels? That's from Paul Needs. Uh, I think I'm back online. Let me know if I am. <laughs> okay, so from Paul needs where are the scores, they are still currently ensconced on the other side, and I'm going to have to uh, move them over soon. Uh, I can't currently see the chat. I don't know. I've got nothing here, people. Hold on. I'm sorry. I'm just refreshing the whole thing. This should fix it. Uh, tell me. I haven't left. There we go. I thought so. I'm here talking to myself. I can't see anything. You guys can see me and I look like an absolute fool. The funny thing is that uh, it's an internet issue and nothing to do with moving anything. I'm still on the same Wi-Fi. This is connected to the same internet, which is on the same wires. Uh, it's just foolish. Anyhow. Alrighty. Uh, on we go. Lighting could be improved from Rab Knox. Is that an improvement? I do think that that light is a little bit much, although uh, will be great. This beastie is going to be perfect for, uh, whoops, I'm to do that, for uh, on the workbench. How's that? Eh, I don't know. We'll see. Okay, now. Uh, Purple Dracos says, Q neighbors power tools. Now it is cool enough for them to come outside. Uh, I can sort of hear them talking in the background. Um, but uh, yeah, it's all fun and games. 
Okay, so everybody was saying stream looks fine, but I had, I was not seeing your comments. So there we go. Um, Vax Headroom says, question, in the latest base build video you used a J-Base neck template. I need one and can't find it on Crimson Guitar Store. Is it a J-Base template? Uh, it should be there. I will... If you could drop an email through shop at crimsonguitars.com, say, I spoke to Ben yesterday, and I will... Oh, I've got a new notebook somewhere. Look at that. I will ask them tomorrow about that. If they are not on the website, they really should be. Um, what I need is lead in my pencil. J-Base template. Okay, so I've seen a couple of people talking about um, uh, talking about the planes and how they've been attached. Yes, there is a new system. This is I've been playing with the, the prototypes and prototyping the way that these things are are installed. Where am I? Oh, you can see what's happening. Uh, so essentially, you lift the planes up and they fold out. So that holds the top, that holds the bottom, and it's a very easy in, out, and it's still holding it there. And it means that instead of having the planes on a, an angled board, which pulls them all out at least six inches or so from the, uh, uh, from the wall, thus taking up valuable space, they are sitting here. We're going to be sorting them out with a variety of uh, materials. Uh, I like the acrylic uh, because it makes, uh, it, makes the, uh, it makes everything look like they're just invisible and just hanging there off the wall. Uh, I understand it's plastic. It is also not going to be thrown away. So there is that. Um, yeah, there we go. But uh, prototyping, the final products will be different. Whew. Okay, so Vulcan Essence come in and says, uh, Hi, Ben. Hi. Uh, now it's clear that your one-day builds take so much longer. Uh, you had to search tools hidden in drawers. Now even <laughs> a widescreen phone image wouldn't do justice to your tool of walls. Wall of tools. Cheers, V. Uh, thank you very much. And yes, I'm, I'm excited. And the whole point is not only to show off because that's a part of it. I just love my tools. Um, it's about making sure that everything is, is accessible and easy. Uh, on top of that, I've got... Uh, can you see? You can't really see. Let's let's do this. So there's a few more drawer units in the building. There must be camera three. Uh, so yeah, there's this. I'm going to be filling engineers' drawers with all sorts of stuff. All of my camera gear is now in this. Um, this is a beautiful old Wellington chest. It locks up and, uh, yeah, I, I um, well, I got it for a steal. Uh, I was buying uh, tools and this uh, old couple were desperate for the space. And they were like, yeah, 200 quid and it's yours. 150? I got that for 175 pounds. I kind of feel bad about it. But anyway, um, it is in here and uh, there's all sorts of stuff is going to be uh, available and quickly and easily to hand. So hopefully the one day builds will take, I don't know, seven or eight, maybe. Uh, but anyway, all fun and games. <sighs> okay, yes, it is getting hot. Yes, George Davis, it is more plastic. Um, and I was fully expecting you to say that. Gareth Travis says, uh, what were the brand of drill bits behind you that you raved about, Ben? Okay, my favorite drill bits are, and I'm not sponsored by either of these companies, although I, to be fair, I didn't actually pay for either set. My favorite drill bits are the Famag, which have a very low, very tight, sorry, uh, helicoidal shape. Uh, they, they are cut absolutely beautifully until and unless you pull all the way through, in which case they tend, because they're so tight, to want to pull pull through rather than just sort of exist at the end. Uh, the, the other, too many cameras. The other set, 
Too many cameras and not enough screens. Uh, the other set are still over here. And these are much less the, the, the helicoidal shape. I don't know what else to call it. Is uh, much more elongated. And that means it doesn't grab as, as such when it goes through or as much. Uh, they also cut very well. Um, these aren't quite as nice as the Famag. Um, but yeah, that's it. Star Rim, Famag. Uh, both fantastic brands. And both brands that do a bunch of other stuff. Uh, Austeriumans come back and said, I've just ordered a new bandsaw blade. Cheers, Bun. Fingers crossed. Honestly, I think that should be it. Short of your motor literally dying, uh, any bandsaw should be able to cut through pretty much any timber. Um, at four inches thick or so, it really, you should be fine. <sighs> okay, uh, Daniel Marquez, how you doing? Says, uh, I loved the new bench. Uh, stream is great, but you need more light on your right side to counter the sunlight from the windows. Uh, yeah, so at the, mo at the moment, there's actually no electricity in here. Uh, these are all extension leads coming through. Uh, but uh, how's that? How's that? Um, yeah, so there's no overhead lights or anything like that. I've just got one diffuser there and a, a couple of lamps. But uh, anyway, it's all fun and games. Uh, Paul Needs says, uh, none of the video looks as vibrant as before. Colors, etc., all a bit gray. Yes, it's different lighting. So I do need to go through and, uh, and sort everything out. All right, wants to. That wants to do a thing. Okay. Uh, so yeah, this is this is the first time. I mean, literally, I've been. <laughs> I've only just managed to get the bench clear uh, of stuff for the first time uh, today. It's been an interesting. It's been interesting. Okay. Uh, Sweet Tea Guitars has come in with a super chat as well. Uh, thank you very much, Sweet Tea, and says it's the way of things. I love the new shop. Thank you very much. I'm I'm really good. Uh, Anonymous Botch says, is it a wobbly bench? It is the same bench. It's the same bench. For now, I need to fix it. Uh, or at least I need to replace it. I just don't have the time. Uh, I've got people shouting at me for the bench. I've got people shouting at me for not doing the hand tool build. And I've got other people shouting at me for other videos that I have got to do that this whole process has just killed. And uh, yeah. Anyway, this isn't supposed to be about me. This is supposed to be about you guys. Uh, Mike Knoll says, I'm thinking about closing my shop in favor of full-time van life for a while. How bad do you suppose sawdust withdrawals will be? It depends on how... how awesome van life is. <laughs> to be frank, I'm fully tempted. I, I have been tempted in the past to do the same thing. Uh, I really have. Ooh, uh, out of interest, um, obviously the, the screen is a little bit higher, so you're going to see me looking up quite a bit more. Uh, I suppose I need to put one in the back here. This is the problem. So, okay, fine, 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 fine. Oh, this is not doing well. This is not doing well. Is that three? That's three. So I've got a little desk sitting. Uh, I'm going to do the streams from here, uh, various tools and, and, and the crow and bits and pieces. And then here's the uh, uh, part of the tool collection. That's the camera I'm, I'm talking to you guys on. Uh, the screen's way up in there. Uh, the, f the annoying thing is when I'm talking to camera, I can see myself in the damn glass. So. Uh, yeah, that's going to be problematic, I think. Uh, but it's giving me away. Part of what we're doing here, or part of what I'm trying to do, is separate myself from the tool collection, separate my usable tools from the stuff that I collect, just because I love looking at it, and I'm inspired to make versions of them, or experiment, or restore. You know, it's all, it is what it is. OK. Paul Needs says, I bought a new recommended bandsaw blade for my cheapo saw, set it up properly, and wow. Okay, 
So I feel like the only uh, the only thing that I've actually said of any value today is buy a new bandsaw blade. So please, everybody, ask me questions. Um, bedroom program. I love the hurdy gurdy joke in the in the base video. So the base series, obviously, we filmed that on the live stream on Monday live streams, which I'm not doing tomorrow again. And um, uh, yeah, the hand tool build is still is going to recommence once I've got this up and running. I've got a, a chisel restoration video coming, uh, getting these babies done, and uh, yeah, it's going to be it's going to be interesting. Okay. Franz Truter, how are you? Says, hi Ben and all, fancy the new look. Those planes behind you, those clips holding them up look interesting, I missed you all, I'm back full steam. Thanks man, welcome back. I'm glad that you're uh, well and raring to go. Um, yeah, these are the, f the final, it's a product that Sam at Crimson designed for his own plane at some point three, four, five years ago when he was first uh, at Crimson. Uh, poor guy, I offered him the job on camera on the What's on the Bench video. And uh, I've always liked the thought, and uh, when we got the laser cutter, I was like, let's just do it. Uh, the final one's gonna be, uh, instead of two individual pieces um, floating around. I thought I had some floating, oh, here we go. Instead of things like this for spaces and stuff, it's actually gonna be on a base that fits the plane, and it'll just be, Beautiful and easy. Okay. Uh, Vulcan Essence says, Ben, today I managed to spill half a bottle of Crimson Spirit Stain on my parquet floor. <whistles> okay. First of all, um, drop us an email, shop at crimsonguitars.com. The next time you order a, a anything else from Crimson, I will send you a, a, another bottle of stain. Uh, he says, first of all, NAFTA helped, then acetone but it left wiping traces on the parquet. Thoughts? I, I, I mean, you're lucky that it's only wiping, wiping traces. I would suggest that you have to probably sand. You probably just have to sand. And I'm so sorry. I, that, that is, yeah, that sucks. Uh, hard, hard, hard luck. Yeah, I, short of short of replacing whatever you're wiping with, so you can keep on using your acetone, and it should keep on pulling it out. But you're just going to get fresh rag or fresh tissue the whole time, uh, because that's I think that's all you've got. Uh, who's that? Oh, hello you. Up you come. Oh. Say hi to everybody. Oh, here we go. I opened the door. You're such a big puppy. This guy was like a quarter the size, maybe six months ago. <laughs> um, yeah, mummy started feeding uh, his sister separately, and she's actually started growing now. Who knew? Off you go. Okay, so uh, Lisa Harshberger, how are you? Uh, Lisa says, I could not afford all the raffle tickets, but did buy some. Uh, I'm really glad it's on there and your place looks great. Thank you very much. It's still a work in progress, very much. Um, lights and I've got, there's all sorts of stuff. And very good luck on the, uh, on, on the bass. Uh, so Lisa has been saying that she desperately wants the bass guitar that we've just built. And it's, uh, from, it's being raffled off, so. Uh, yeah, that is currently live. That is currently live. I think we've sold a couple hundred tickets so far. Uh, by the way, please let me know if the if the camera flashes, um, if the screen flashes. I've been having some issues, and uh, I think it's due to the length of wire. But uh, yeah, it is what it is. Now. Robert R, how are you? 
Uh, no, I have not seen the tiny new shop that Goth Rider built. Uh, it's not big, but at least he has a place to work in now. Um, uh, Robert says, I, I haven't yet seen that. I've uh, not had... I've not had any spare time to watch anybody do anything, but um, you don't have to have a giant workshop in order to build guitars. A, a bandsaw is a really good thing, a spindle sander is a really useful thing, but yeah, you can do this in, in a very limited space and uh, that makes me happy. I mean, in reality, the, the size of the, the room I'm in now is probably overkill. Uh, I could actually get a bandsaw. I, I worked on an 8 by 6 shed when COVID first hit, and I didn't even have a bandsaw, and it, it was okay. It was okay. Um, so, questions. The big unit says, uh, Ben, somebody pointed out an issue with my top horn access, and I need to cut a larger access for my big hands. Uh, uh, the big unit is is not just a name, it is a fact. Um, but my bandsaw can't get to it. Am I daft for, for considering a jigsaw to make the cut? Uh, to a certain extent, yes. What I would do uh, and do do all the time, if you can't make the whole cut with the bandsaw, you go in in multiple cuts next to each other, uh, to the line, or to nearly to the line, and then at an angle, you go in and you and you cut that short, and uh, by doing that, you will be able to uh, cut much tighter curves, and you'll only have a little bit of excess to uh, to mess around with. Jigsaws are fine, but when they decide to bite you in the ass, they bite you in the ass. Uh, if you watched the guitar that I built live, <laughs> live, on stage at Maker Central uh, on the Triton stage, I should have brought my own tools they they brought a bunch of brand new tools and they hadn't been set up. Nobody would used them. Um, I assumed I'd be getting demo models or something like that. And uh, the jigsaw was cutting at an angle and it was just, and I didn't check and I didn't think about it and, and that's it. It was not, it was not good. I worked it into the design and it worked out really well. I really liked that guitar, but still, okay. Uh, Vulcan Essen says, thanks Ben, your facial expression just caught how I felt when the spirit stain spilled. Uh, updates on the kit guitars policies, cheers V. Okay, um, now. Let me see. Wow. Who the hell is Boo Boo Guitars? Um... <laughs> No, the kits are still not, still not live, which is annoying because I had, okay, there we go. Uh, we're still working on it. I've spent about three days last week uh, delving into accounts and uh, profits and losses and um, Essentially, we've been building kit guitars in exactly the same way that we would build a custom guitar. And when it's a 400 pound or 500 pound instrument, you can't treat it like a three or a 4,000 pound instrument. And uh, i.e. just, you know, a one-on-one -on -one luthier uh, going out and spinning as long as, as, as is required. Uh, we, so we need to sort out some batch work and some uh, more factory like processes in order to make them to the same sort of level of quality but just much more efficiently and uh, chances are chances are that the kits are going to be going live again next week so we'll, we'll yeah we'll be back if not i will let you know uh, we shall see okay uh, Kiwi Quarters, hey man, how you doing? Uh, says, hey Ben, I'm just wondering, is there anything special about your guitar plastics, scratch plates, pickup rings, etc., or is it just 50s era tradition? Uh, okay, so they don't necessarily affect the way the guitar sounds in any way. Uh, for to, del to delve into a, a rabbit hole, uh, 
a good pickup will have a nickel silver base a good pickup there are pickups that traditionally have had been made with nickel silver and others use brass or pressed steel or whatever and, and there are tonal differences that you can to a certain extent hear um, nobody's going to hear the difference between a a different pickguard material or a different pickup surround plastic so no no special characteristics it's just what we use uh, because they are the bloody good designs really they they do what they're supposed to um, yeah it's what it is Okay, big unit. Let me know if that under if you got what I said there. Uh, I could probably explain it a bit better. Okay. <laughs> Kiwi quarters. <laughs> I spilled my guitar kit, Ben. Can can, can I have another? <laughs> Cheeky. Uh, I love it. Okay. Cameron Gorse loves the, loves the new setup. My favourite thing about the new setup. Um, my favorite thing about the new setup is this is camera two. Oh, let's get that. Oh, wait, that's camera three. I've changed the actual cameras as well. Uh, is I finally got a good selection of, uh, of my books here. And uh, yeah, there's a lot of stuff on. I've I've got some really 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 good books, um, and and the research, the research there, and being able to just pull something out and say, "Well, oh, this is Banzel, this is Banzel setup, this is router bits, etc." Uh, there's more over there. There's more over there. Um, but yeah, having this, I almost moved out. I seriously considered just putting a bed in here and uh, and just living down in, in in the shed for a while. My wife also seriously considered making me sleep in the shed. Anyway. <laughs> Sporadic music. Uh, evening, Mr. Crow. If we wanted to send you something, would it be better to... Uh, would it be to Crimson HQ for you to pick up from there? Absolutely. My home address doesn't... Actually, not many people even know where I live. And uh, <sighs> there's some strange people on the internet. Um, I am one of them. Absolutely, no. With with the tool collection and all that, it's uh, it's a, it's a thing. But um, but yes, uh, Crimson Headquarters. The, the address is on the website. Please make sure to put your name in the package so that I know who to thank. Um, I'm trying. Uh, yeah, I need to get my shit sorted together. But uh, yeah, to Crimson Headquarters. I am there pretty much every working day at this point. And it's going to be even more so moving forward. I'm uh, n building my workshop at headquarters as well. You're going to see a lot more film from there. And uh, I'm greedy. I'm just going to have two workshops. Woohoo. Uh, Joe Brown says, Hi Ben, is it possible to over oil a fretboard? <sighs> Essentially, if you're using the wrong oil, yes, don't use olive oil. I saw a video today about somebody who'd been using olive oil and that it's a non-drying oil, don't do that. I can't remember whose video it was, sadly. But uh, yeah, it was very clickbaity. You won't believe what this guy put on his guitar uh, or something like that. And I clicked it, so there we go. Traditionally, guitar finishing oils or, sorry, fretboard oils, when you apply them, will soak in and soak in and soak in, and the point at which you stop is when they start, well, they stop soaking in, they just sit on the surface and, and, and don't go in. At that point, you rub away the excess and you're done. Now, lemon oils, which are like 98% solvents, uh, you get that a lot less, but uh, g better quality uh, oils like the Crimson Guitars uh, Fretboard Restorative, for example. If you over oil it, it's going to fall off. You're going to wipe it off and you'll be fine. So no, no, I don't think it is possible to over oil a fretboard. 
uh, Tutankhamun. So he put some numbers on the cameras to make life easier. It's I've just swapped. So instead of having camera two on on the ceiling, uh, I've got two tripod cameras, and I, I want to put them on mic stands. Actually, I think. Uh, and then we've got uh, we've got a really cool camera, uh, nice up 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 high, uh, which is fine. Uh, camera one is on a a great big long rail, so I've got more flexibility there. Camera four is on a rail, the overhead one, so I can see the whole bench, and uh, it's having ceiling height is incredible. So uh, so yeah, I'm. I'm starting to feel this workshop i really am uh, the main thing is sorting that out timber store getting the uh, the dehumidifiers plumbed through the walls so the water's going out and uh, all of the extra bits and pieces that are coming in er webster hey man uh, says i'm starting my ggbo build tomorrow will i make it in time i think you shall i think you will seriously um, there's there's a while to go uh, now on that note uh, on that note, we've we've been struggling with the invitationals, uh, and we've been struggling. I am struggling with time. I am struggling massively with time, and it's very difficult to delegate some of these things as well. But uh, uh, in any in any case, we sent an email out to all of the people who are entered into the professional category and the, uh, the people that are preparing for the Invitational. And we've decided to push it back so that the Invitational is ending um, in the second week of December. Uh, that data should actually be on the website now. What it means is it's separating out the, the public and the sort of Invitational professional side of things, uh, which means we'll have GGBO content for much longer in the year. Um, but it's also giving us time for, for me to really get into uh, now trying to get in touch with people it's the people that I've wanted 90% of them haven't even replied and uh, the 10% that have gonna be incredible <laughs> there's gonna be some fun stuff going on but anyway that's that's uh, GGBO at the moment so uh, uh, the general competition nothing is changing no rules no no anything um, but uh, yeah, the invitationals and the professionals are getting a bit more time so we can get more people in uh, on those sites. Uh, now, questions, queries, comments. Sweet Tea says, any word on Terry Love? We're all worried about him. He's a part of this and we need him. Do you know what? Uh, no, and I don't think I have his contact details. I don't have many of your contact details. Um, But uh, that's a very good point. Where is he? I mean, it is a particularly warm and bright evening and the sun is still up. So uh, he's probably decided that uh, life does not need to revolve around uh, watching me talk to a camera. Uh, Tommy Transplant, how you doing? Says, hello, all been out of the loop for a while doing liver swaps. I didn't know where that sentence was going and I did not expect that. Uh, I've been out of the loop for a while doing liver swaps, but it's nice to be back. Love the new space, Ben. Now, okay, Tommy Transplant, the name does give us a clue, but it doesn't give, doesn't let me know whether you're the transplantor or the transplantee or the donator of, of things, or if this is even a, um, a legit, medically sanctioned thing you could be you know black market liver transfers hmm. <laughs> let us know <laughs> had to go wolf grid <laughs> then no that's horrible i didn't say anything i i, I the tired i get the the uh, uh, the darker my sense of humor goes uh, and finally i've also been told that i have to cut down drastically on the caffeine so i am currently running on two cups of coffee and one cup of tea. Not good. Okay, Steve Tuttle Guitars. Ben, I got a great piece of black limber for a top. 
I've never worked with Libba. Are there any quirks or issues that I need to be aware of? I plan to use an oil finish on it. Thanks, Steve. It's a particular, it's a relatively easy wood to work with. Uh, it's, it can be quite soft, but it doesn't want to chip out. It takes an oil really well. Um, yeah, go for it. Uh, I, Vintage Tool Shop, you know that we uh, also own VintageToolShop.com and part of that is that I go and pick up tools. Uh, not often, most of our stuff we buy and uh, we'll do stuff via email and people will ship it to us and it's easy. But if there's a workshop anywhere near, I'll go and pick it up, I just love doing that. Um, this is where this gorgeous lamp came from actually. Problem is, the problem is so, so yesterday I picked up a bunch of tools and uh, this guy was saying oh I've got I'm gonna have to burn all of the wood as well huh so, sorry wood uh, yeah I bought not only some rosewood and not huge pieces but enough to make probably five or six fretboards um, but rather a lot of bog oak that has been sitting in his garage for 30 years a uh, workshop at least it wasn't a garage uh, some cuban bona fide cuban mahogany sadly without cites uh, so i'm gonna have to um, uh, well it's gonna have to be a private uh, personal guitar that i don't uh, do anything with um, but also a really large slab of uh, zebra wood or uh, goncalo alves and it was just, I, I went there for some planes and bits and pieces and ended up staying for a load of wood. Um, I love my life. And it's all the better because you guys are in it. Okay, questions, 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 comments, criticisms, questions. Uh, Old Man Bill says, I've got a large workshop, but I have, but I still tripped over trailing wires on the floor. Now I've got five stitches in my right index finger. Hashtag always learning. I tell you, um, this stuff. Oh, excuse my neighbor's dog. Uh, I've got a five meter length of this stuff that's just arrived. This is the bit that came out of the floor. The, the cables go down the middle and then you nail it to the floor. And I've been very, very careful. I'm gonna do a full proper tour thing of this workshop um, at some point. But, um, but yeah, here's, no wait, that's camera, that's the wrong camera. I have to change this. So there's, uh, whoops, the camera. These cables going down the wall. Extension leads. You see, that's rat. That rat's nest is the HDMI cable from this camera, and that's the only thing I can't hide. You got cables on the floor there. You got cables going down there. All of these things. They're going to be underneath those rubber bits and pieces so that uh, well so that it can be safe because yeah the last thing you need is to trip up in a workshop that is full okay it's full of sharp tools and things uh, just don't although the closest I've <laughs> yeah okay I'm somewhat embarrassed, but since we're talking about injuries, uh, these initial ones are super glued together. And I've been customizing them, shaping, scraping, sanding, rasping, etc. I managed to get bandsaw acrylic dust on my finger. And I'm sweating and horrible and I scratched my eye and I managed to scratch my eyeball. And then literally a minute later, I got super glue on a finger that I didn't realize and scratched my other eye. And I got super glue for the third time in my life now. And luckily it was just in the corner of my eye here. And it, it pretty much dried immediately. Uh, tears just, just do it. Yet again, don't 
put super glue in your eyeballs. And when you do, don't close your eyes. Um, so there we go. Stephen Hatch says, I dropped a bottle of Crimson Kit Guitar on the floor. <laughs> I spilled my kit guitar. Everybody's uh, got the joke. Okay. Um, now. Uh, SM Meyer says, Ben, how do I get raffle tickets or is that something I cannot do on Mac OS? Uh, no, raffle tickets are uh, global, 100%. Uh, we will ship this guitar, uh, base in this case, to anyone in the world that wins. And uh, the link is in the description of the bass guitar video. Um, uh, we use a, a site called Raffle, R-A-F-F-A-L. Um, just pop over to their website. They give you the option to sign in with Facebook if you have Facebook, but below that there's somewhere to sign up via email. Um, you have to create an account with them so that they can obviously get in touch with you if you win. And that's it. And at that point, the whole the whole system is is out of our hands. It is entirely legal, and that's the biggest issue. Doing international raffles is an absolute nightmare. Uh, they've done it properly and got the the right. Um, they've gone through all the red tape everywhere, basically, and uh, and it works very well. We've we've now raffled off at least four or five instruments with them. And uh, everybody's been happy, and uh, yeah, it works. Tears of Ben, that's a good name for super glue adhesive. That's from Dimitri, thank you very much. Uh, oh, Car Price is saying 273 tickets have sold so far. So, uh, yeah, the odds are, and Paul Cook has just left a, thank you very much, Paul, has left a link in the, in the comments. So, I'll pin that. I'm not sure if that, what that does, but there we go. Uh, VCS the Bone Cruncher, still one of my favorite names on YouTube. Uh, I found out the hard way that not all router bits are suitable for hand use. The router escaped and decided to feed on my arm. I regret talking about injuries. Fortunately, wearing a very, very heavy coat. Hell. <laughs> yeah, some router bits are too big. Some router bits look like router bits and they're not. They're spindle cutters. Um, sheesh. Uh, Melt Disc says, I dropped Bob on Nebula. I'm far too kind, you guys. Uh, ben, in case it doesn't get through from Discord, I wanted to build a router table or overhead pin router combination. Any pointer on how to go about that? Peter, pin routers scare me. I had a giant one at one point and I never felt safe with it, even though it was a factory made Wadkin I think really so so solid that we couldn't actually get it out in the end it just needed to be cut up and scrapped which was also sad <sighs> not something I've ever done not something I'm likely to want to do but it should be relatively straightforward the whole point is that your router, your router needs to be able to go, it needs to go up and down. So you're talking rails of some sort, but it also has to be absolutely dead nut centered on the pin. If you can get those two things nice and central and sorted, it's fine. It really is fine. But uh, honestly, in small scale guitar building, if you're talking large scale guitar building, buy a pin router. You can find them. You can find them on eBay, and it's something that you can get. If you're talking small scale, I would not bother. I would just use a router table, and uh, yeah. Now, the table part of the router table is absolutely fine. You can use any structure that you have. Uh, I would suggest that you get a router table insert, uh, but even so, that's not necessary. Uh, just make something nice and solid. And make sure that it lines up nicely with the uh, uh, with the rest of the table. So when you're feeding long pieces of wood uh, across it, you don't have any duck, uh, dips and, and drops and bits and pieces. <sighs> All right, Stephen Clark says, "How thin is too thin for a body?" 
Uh, my blank is around 40 millimeters or just over one and a half inches. Should I add another layer to this hippie sandwich before I glue the top? Uh, no, not at all. 40 millimeters is fine. Uh, many production guitars are 38 millimeters. I have made guitars at 30 or below uh, because it was solid bubinga in that particular case and it needed to be thin. We then, I say we, a member of, I, I built the thing, didn't really finish it, passed it on to a member of staff who proceeded to uh, realize that the wiring holes hadn't been done and drilled straight through the back because it was so thin. That one ended up with an inlay on the back. <laughs> but yes, uh, that's fine. As long as you can, as long as you can fit your potentiometers and your switches and things in there and still get the, the, the back plates on or, uh, or scratch plates on, etc. Yeah, you know, there is no such thing as too thin. Nick Guitar says, what type of workbench would you prefer? Rubo, Continental, English? God, I think a sort of cross between a Rubo and a, and a Continental, but, but it's such a difficult thing. It's such a difficult thing and I've lost. Ha, huh, all my workbench books. Here we go. <laughs> yeah. This one. Oops. Is that not just incredible? The big slide, it just, yeah, I haven't got the space. Okay. Uh, Stephen Hutch uh, talking about the raffle. Um, I have not. Robert R. Uh, ben, have you seen any of the videos that Orbital Guitars has a build named Bob 2? I'll check that out. Uh, that's I very much like. I, I love. I love seeing my influence out in the world and seeing people build things, especially based on my craziest uh, ideas. So. Um, Okay. Oh, yes. So uh, somebody was talking about, uh, Paul, uh, still talking about the raffles. Says, yeah, the Red Hoffner raffle ended a few days ago. Philippe Phil or something like that one. Very well remembered. It was literally that. Philippe Phil, uh, somebody in, some, somewhere in France, uh, uh, won the Hoffner and we shipped it off the next day. So uh, <laughs> after finding a, a trim arm. And uh, yeah, I'm expecting uh, him to get that imminently. Which is which is really cool. It actually reached the the top. I put a, a limit on the amount of tickets, not thinking we'd get anywhere near that, and it, it it hit. So here we go. Questions. Sporadic amnesic just purchased a raffle ticket for the base. Thank you very much, and maybe odds ever be in your favour. Uh, Mark Milligan, sorry I'm late, but I uh, have been prepping my 10 year old's new room for paint all day. Oof. Three quarters of the walls and ceilings needed done. Uh, tell me, tell me this, how come that amount of sanding and I didn't lose weight? I'm just tired. Uh, DIY. It's, it, yeah, no, thank you. I, I feel I feel your pain. I sincerely hope that you did not have to do any plastering. I thought that I was a skillful or relatively skillful individual. Plastering kicked my ass. That it did. Okay. Nope, that wasn't what I thought it was. Oh, good. Okay, uh, bedroom programmer says, thanks, I only intend to use it for very specific work steps involving templates, anything more complicated goes on the CNC, I'm only worried about flexing. That is exactly the issue uh, with the uh, pin router system. 
Uh, I do think that it could be done fairly straight, in a fairly straightforward manner. Uh, if it's only for relatively, if it's only for guitar size stuff, in reality, you don't need to have the full sort of foot or so of, uh, uh, of up down throw uh, that I had on my commercial pin router. You could actually use a Triton router and, or I suppose, router of your choice and just use the the inbuilt um, adjustment I think that could work I really do actually think that could work so literally a workbench and a shelf above a workbench nice and solid could be done hell I'm now tempted to make it what have you done to me ah <laughs> Uh, Luther Build is asking, what is the deadline for the regular uh, GGBO? I do not have the dates in my head. Uh, but it's right here. 1st of October. Yeah, I know it's got ages to go. No. Hold on, wait for a second. I'm reading scintillating video. Fifth of November will be the winning winners of the categories. Oh, come on! I'm going to stop reading this. Uh, other people are going to tell us in the in the chat because they're awesome. Uh, Bedroom programmer says, I'm aiming for a 10 centimeter throw. That's about right. Lisa says, Ben, uh, I'm going to buy a file. Which Iwasaki file should I get first? Which is most useful? Okay, uh, the curves, the curved Iwasaki files. And uh, personally, uh -huh. those carving gouges are a little bit uh, high. Look at that. I knew exactly where it was as well. Personally, I love the little ones. Uh, now, if you can get... If you can get two and save on shipping and uh, the planet, then I would get the two, the large and the small curved um, Iwasaki files. That they're incredible, and they're really if you uh, uh, if you're not being too hard on them, uh, they last a long time, um, a long time. Wolford Guitar says, hey Ben, can you show off that Preston plane behind you please and how useful is it? Uh, this one, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to assume you're talking about this one here. So, uh, let's have a look. This is a, this is a very special, this is a very, very special little plane. And uh, if I had everything, There you go. So it's just a standard bullnose plane, or in shape at least. And uh, to be honest, in guitar building, I don't find it particularly useful. Uh, it's not something I, I, I generally use. You've got to watch out for chips uh, in the mouth. Uh, there you go, you can see that. So I've got a tiny, tiny little chip on the corner there because it's such a low angle. Uh, the iron there is, is, is quite delicate. But what is special about this, you've got a, a groove at the end there. And you've got holes. And this is actually supposed to have a depth stop and a fence, which actually would make it much, much more useful. And, uh, and also a hell of a lot more valuable. Uh, at some point, I at some well, I've kept this because I actually want to make those parts for this as a project just for fun. Um, but yeah, it's one of those things. I'd actually forgotten all about that. Um, there we go. 
Okay, Volcan Essen says hi there. How would you go? How would you go about fitting a lispel neck to a lispel body, and the two came from different sources? Whoa, or one unreliable supplier from the Far East. Cheers, V. Okay, so uh, uh, there's so many different ways of doing this. In reality, a nice flat, big surface with a nice big piece of coarse sandpaper on it, 80 grit, maybe 120 grit, and holding the neck and moving the neck itself. I'm going to assume the neck is too big for the uh, too big for the body. I would move the neck and sand it down in that way and slowly, gently ablate it to size. Go away, Google. I'm not going to click. I'm not going to insert an advert. Leave me alone. OK. Uh, Britt Boyle says a big thank you, Ben. I've learned so much from your videos and always look forward to the next one. Thank you very much. Um, me too. Uh, ER Webster <laughs> drywall is serious work. The guys who make it look easy are both skilled and have a lot of endurance. <sighs> yeah, it, it's it's mind-blowingly cool. Uh, uh, Cameron Gore says it looks like the front end of a Stanley 78. It does, actually, yeah. Okay. Um, everybody? It has been an hour. Um, I'm starting to feel a bit dodgy. I'm going to answer Joe's question here. If you have any other questions, I'm going to be calling this uh, relatively early this evening. Um, uh, says, hi, Bun. Uh, this is from Joe Thornall. Uh, why do necks get thicker with 42 by 20 millimeters strong enough up at the nut? They get wider for the strings to vibrate, and there are chord-based songs with a capo quite high up the neck. Wouldn't it be nicer, more harmonious? Oud was surprisingly comfortable. <sighs> Tradition. We thought it should be that way and guitar guitarists do not want to... Once you've learned how to play something that is the way it is, you don't want to relearn that. Um, anyway, look, I need to, I need to go. I'm going to say thank you very, very much for your support. Uh, I have, I've eaten something very dodgy and uh, yeah, I'm currently talking to 165 people. So I'd best stop that uh, before anything goes seriously wrong. Technical difficulties of throwing up on your laptop on a live stream. No, thank you. Uh, there is not going to be a build tomorrow. There's not going to be a live stream tomorrow uh, or anything like that. But uh, yeah, it's um, one of those one of those things. So uh, I will be back Q and A next week, and uh, life is life is getting back to normal now. This the build is done, and we're gonna or nearly done. It's gonna be good. Uh, I will. Uh, I'll see you soon. Thank you for your support. Have a good week. Go make some sawdust.